I've always wanted to build a robot arm and I found the Sane Smart 6R Axis mechanical desktop arm on the internet and I got it shipped to the UK and I got it shipped a little bit quicker, uh, arrived on time, really well packaged, it was all there, complete kit, so no complaints there. However, I've really struggled with any instructions for building the robot arm. There are a couple of videos on the Sane Smart site but they're dreadful. They're not very good at all. The first one is out of focus, cuts out the bits that are really important, can't see what's happening. And the second one is just uh, a, an animation of mechanical uh, software showing how it's assembled together. But not very accurate in my mind in terms of what I did realistically when I built it myself. So what I've done is I've built a video that showed how I did it and what it looks like complete. I'm not going to show you it step by step. You can put nuts and bolts together really easily. But I thought it might help if you could see what the finished product looks like so that you can get an idea of where everything goes because I really had to struggle finding that out. Hopefully you'll enjoy what I've done and let's move on to the tools that I used. Here are the tools that I used when I was building my kit. Some very straightforward like the screwdrivers on the top left hand side. And then just below those screwdrivers you'll see a pair of long nose pliers which were really useful for managing the little nuts, the hex nuts, which are an M3 size. Now really useful was another thing that I bought which was that red handled hex socket screwdriver for M3 nuts. It came as a set, you've got lots of different sizes, so that'll be really useful as I move on to other projects. And just below that you'll see a little spanner with a red band around it, which is from another kit I built. And that's an M3 spanner, really useful for holding nuts in place. The hex nuts are fiddly, but if you look after them properly, you'll be okay. Right down on the bottom right hand side you'll see a little spanner and a pillar, a brass pillar that I used, which was really useful for putting the mega onto the turntable that's included with the kit I bought. It's just better way to do it from my mind so you can snake cables through and so forth. And the little spanner is a with the blue band is a hex spanner for those pillars. So it really made it easy to tighten them up nice and neat. Let's go on now to talk about how I managed with the servos. It was when I was working with the servos that I found the real problems with the videos that are supplied on the Saint Smart website. I couldn't work out what was happening. In fact, they were missing bits out on that video. It's really important that when you're using the servos that you use the servo kit that comes with each one. There are two different types of servos and I used one particular type throughout the arm and a different one for the turntable and for the pincer arm at the end. These are the servos I used in the arm itself uh, throughout the extension of the arm and here are the bits that I think are important for you to manage. You'll notice that below the servo itself there are some rubber grommets. These are really important and it's important that you put these in in all four of the slots which are on each of the servos because they really help to tighten things up when you introduce the servo into the mechanical arm. It makes everything so much more robust, everything is much more structured and, and stable. So use them all the time. Now you have to hunt really carefully for the flat plates that go onto the servo in the pack, or I did anyway. But when I found them, um, they were really good. But I did change the screws which are used to, to attach the the arms, the, sorry, the, the plates that are here, the round plates, to the arm structure itself. I found that the ones I wear, which are down here on the left hand side, which have a flat surface, were really useful because they're slightly shorter and they didn't foul the servo itself. So I used those on all of the servos and it was really effective. It's important that you do use the black fixing screw to hold the plate into the servo itself because that really does improve rigidity and structure and so forth. Now on the right hand side you'll see some round washers. I used those in the pincer arm at the end just to, to make things line up better. You don't have to do that. I think it would probably work without it. I just wasn't happy with the way things were lining up. But the servers are crucial and it's important that you use them well. The general guideline is build the structure first, then introduce the servo into the structure because you'll find that's much easier to find access to all of the bits that you need to get access to. The way in which the rotating arm is used is indicated on the, the, the rest of the still photographs that I'm going to show you in a minute, but you'll see that everything lines up really well and if you're just careful it will all look really good and fit together neatly. 
I decided to show you how the servo assembly thing works because although I said I wasn't going to show you nuts and bolts I think this may be useful. So here's the bracket that the servo goes into from various points of view, it just shows you different angles on the servo bracket to give you an idea of how you can see it in the finished pictures that I'm going to show you in a little moment because it just helps you to orientate things and you will see the flat plate, the two lug arms that extend and so forth. So we'll move on now into how it starts to go together. You can see the two arms and the back plate and so forth. So just there's lots of different angles for you to look at for that. So here are the four grommets that you're going to put into the holes in the, the servo itself. They fit into those holes on the side, two on each side obviously as you can see. So you'll see them now in place and what they're going to do is they're going to help to give stability, a bit of, a bit of compression, a bit of I suppose, uh, suspension. So that's it offered up. Now it goes on top of the servo arm. You'll see that I've put the servo arm on the outside of the arm. And these are the nuts and bolts that we're going to use. And this is where the hex socket spanner comes in really useful. So I tighten up using a screwdriver and the hex socket spanner against the assembly like that. And you'll see that it all starts to fit together really quite neatly. And it should be snug. It should be tight once you've done this and it's once it's finished. And that's it finished. And what I'm going to do now is put the plate on top of the servo rotor. So that's the plate offered on there. It just pushes on. And then you put the, uh, the bolt into the centre and tighten it up nice and neat. And that's the servo assembly done. And then that'll be offered into the framework against the bits of the chassis that you're going to put it into. What's coming next is a set of still photographs that I took of the assembled arm. Each one lasts for about five seconds before it animates into the next through the Lightroom thing that I did. It makes a slideshow automatically. I don't intend to talk through all of these. These are just to give you an overall impression of what you're going to end up with. Because as I say, you can all put nuts and bolts together, but this will give you an idea of what the end product will look like. If you've got any comments, just leave them below. Um, thumbs up would be nice, but who, who, it doesn't really matter if you don't, of course. So just to follow it through, and um, I hope it all works for you as well as it did for me eventually.
The next step is to put the control system together and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it wired at first before I attempt to do it wireless. I bought the wireless kit from Saint Smart. Um, it's not very good I don't think but I think the controls are useful so I'm going to use them on my own rig. Make it wired first and then turn it into wireless. Uh, hopefully it'll all work and I'll sure try and share the software with you if I make any modifications to the way in which it's done on the Saint Smart version. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> 